Good morning. Whoever you are and wherever you are on your journey of faith, welcome to our virtual worship service. Today we begin our journey through Lent. We will join our hearts and minds together, ready to learn about Jesus, who continually calls us to build God's kingdom of peace on earth. At our Maryville Fallowfield Prestle Charge, we are committed to practicing God's radical love and inclusion. Our charge believes worship is intended to move us, change us, and form us into faithful followers who practice the compassionate teachings of Jesus. As we begin our Lenten journey today, we will hold the people of Ukraine in our hearts and prayers. There was an article online titled, As Russia Invades Ukraine, Pastors Stay to Serve, Pray, and Resist. The article went on to say that when this is over, the citizens of Kyiv will remember how Christians have responded in their time of need. The question for us is how can we respond to the Ukraine's time of need? Many of us feel helpless and at loss as to what we can do in this situation, but we can help. There are many organizations taking financial donations and much needed supplies at this time. The government will match individual donations up to March 18th to the Canadian Red Cross Ukraine Humanitarian Crisis Appeal. You can find more information about that online. You can confirm the charitable status of organizations using a list of charities and other qualified donees on Canada.ca if you have any concerns. There are also Ukrainian organizations and churches listed online that can offer us advice on how best to help their country. We are very grateful for your continued generous financial support to other organizations that need help in these challenging times. The Elizabeth Fry Society, Center 507, the Ottawa Mission, and local food banks are some that are dedicated to helping the most vulnerable in our society. You can find information about these communities on our website. If you would like to donate to the church, you can do so online by e-transfer to muchurch at belnet.ca or you can send a check to either Maryville or Fallowfield Church. You can find each address on our website www.maryvellefallowfield.org. We are also resuming in-person services today, Sunday, March the 6th, with the combined service at Fallowfield United Church at 10 a.m. The March 13th service will also be at Fallowfield, and then we will come together at Maryville on March 20th and 27th. All services will commence at 10 a.m. We will ask for proof of vaccination and wearing of masks at least for March, but distancing is not necessary when all are vaccinated. We look forward to getting together again. The online services will continue for those unable to attend in person. And that concludes the announcements for this week. We hope that you will enjoy the worship service that is all about our commitment to making the world a kinder place. Today is the first Sunday of Lent. Lent calls us to be especially aware to the leading of the Holy Spirit for the next 40 days. As we light the Christ candle, may we agree to be led by the Spirit even into uncomfortable places. As we seek to follow Jesus on this amazing journey through Lent, may we be led by love, peace, justice and compassion. Amen.
May the God of grace be welcome in our midst. May we receive the gift of peace and divine love. Come, let us worship with our hearts, minds, and souls. Let us be one with seeking justice and compassion. Blessed be our learning and blessed be our vision. Blessed be God who inspires all things to be new. Please join me in our opening prayer. Today, on this first Sunday in the season of Lent, we pray for hope. And we hope to be part of your greater plan for all that is good in our world. Help us, O oh God, to remember that you are the presence in whom we live, move, and have our being. And today, we pray for peace and ask that you will come and make a home of peace within our hearts. May we see your image in the hearts of all people, and may we know the human race as a human family. And so today we ask that you help us to embrace our diversity. We especially pray for peace between the Ukraine and Russia, as well as our world. We are grateful for our celebrations as we face challenges in this journey through life. We give you thanks for our friendships and the communities we have to share our celebrations with. We especially give you thanks for a community of faith that is always there to support us. Today we ask that you open our hearts to love so that during our worship we will know that we are valued both by you, the Creator, and our neighbor. Help us to embody this love in meaningful ways that are beneficial to the healing of our planet. May we learn from the teachings of Jesus to let your love always be evident through our actions. And we pray that you will open our awareness that we might discover the love that leads us to be better people, honorable, and compassionate. Break open our hearts on this first Sunday in Lent that we might truly embrace the message of Jesus that calls us to rejoice as we travel with each other along this amazing journey of faith. And be with us now, O oh God, as we say the ancient prayer of our faith tradition. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Good morning. Our first reading is from Deuteronomy 26 verses 1 through 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, has given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, sh then you together with the Levites, and the aliens who reside among you shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house.
Our second reading is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 19, the temptation of Jesus. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor.
Let us pray. Open our hearts that we may be attentive to your spirit among us, O God. Focus our minds that we may discern your will. Teach our spirits that we may anticipate joy. And guide our feet that we may walk the road of love, justice, and peace. Amen. Right now, today at this very moment, I know that I am struggling and I am scared. I am worried for my children, my grandchildren, the rest of my family, and I am worried for the human family. And this I know as well. I am tired of the chaos in the world. I am tired of COVID. I am tired of the division that the convoy brought to our community. And I am tired of extremely wealthy leaders not caring at all about humanity or our planet with their threats of war. Right now, today, I feel I can relate to Jesus in the wilderness. Now, we have been a lot longer than 40 days in the desert, and we are being tempted. And if you don't agree on what the so-called devil is, I am sure we will all agree that evil is certainly real. All we need to do is turn on our computer screens or the TV, and there it is right in front of us. Our story in Luke's Gospel begins. Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, is plunged into the wilderness, where for 40 days he is tempted by the devil. And we know from this that the forces of evil are at play. For me, the story of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness is not about sinfulness or divine strength. Jesus' temptation in the wilderness is about our human relationship with God and our human relationship with each other and all of humanity. The story is also about the choices we make in life. Do we choose like Jesus did? to build the kingdom come on earth? Or do we choose to tear it down like some leaders are doing today? You know, when the new year came around, I was hopeful. And I thought to myself, this is going to be a really good year. COVID will die out and we will open the church doors wide. And once again, we will gather with our family and our friends. Then on January 22nd, 2022, my favorite Buddhist teacher, Thich Nhat Hanh, died. And I was really sad because for me, the world had lost a very compassionate and caring man. Thich Nhat Hanh was a Vietnamese Zen master. He was a peace activist, prolific author, poet, and teacher. And Martin Luther King Jr. called him an apostle of peace and nonviolence and nominated him for the Nobel Peace Prize. Throughout Thich Nhat Hanh's life, he traveled widely, spreading a message of peace and calling for specific steps to reverse the cycle of violence, war, and global warming. So for me, 2022 was not off to a great start. But you know what? I still had hope. Then, then on February 3rd, my favorite rabbi died. And the world had lost another gentle and compassionate leader as far as I was concerned. Rabbi Douglas Goldhammer in 1973 founded Congregation Ben Shalom, a reformed synagogue in Skokie, Illinois, that interprets all of its services in American Sign Language. And in 1992, he created the Hebrew Seminary, the world's first and still only rabbinic school for people who are unable to hear. Rabbi Goldhammer's guiding philosophy centered on caring for others. And according to his wife, wherever he went, he had money in one pocket for those who needed it, 
an animal treat in another pocket for all of its furry friends. So much for 2022. I think we can all agree it has not really been great. COVID is still around. We have become a divided community over the convoy. And now we are facing a global threat of war. Ukrainians and Russians are suffering unbearably. We are in the desert. We are in Lent. But here's the thing. We have choices. We can go the route of people like Thich Nhat Hanh and Rabbi Douglas Goldhammer, who regardless of the hardships they faced in life, chose to build the kingdom come on earth. Jesus made it clear to the evil in the desert that he would not let it win. He chose to build the kingdom come on earth by entering a covenant with God, with humanity, and all of creation. You know, this past Friday, our pastoral charge collected around $2,500 worth of medical supplies and toiletries for the people of Ukraine. And other people chipped in as well. And I know that many of us are also sending donations to other charities that are collecting goods for Ukraine. We may not be able to go over and help in person, but we can show our neighbors who are suffering that we care. We can show our neighbors that we are choosing to build the kingdom come on earth. When Jesus comes out of the desert, evil loses because Jesus chooses to build the kingdom come on earth. He goes to the synagogue as soon as he gets out of the desert and he publicly declares that he is choosing to be there for the poor. He is choosing to be on the side of the captive and he is choosing to be on the side of the oppressed. Jesus assures us that we are not alone in the world. God is with us. We are not alone to face the troubles and fears and heartbreaks and temptations of the world on our own. We are not alone now, nor will we ever be. We travel the road of good with like-minded people all the time. And you know what? The majority of people in the world are good people and are choosing to live in right relationship with each other. Just like in the days of Jesus, it is the leaders that are dividing us because of their greed for money and power. No, I'm not saying all leaders are like that because I don't believe they are. But too many of them are. In Deuteronomy, when the Israelites were being treated harshly by a leader, they cried to the God of our ancestors, and the Lord saw their affliction and their oppression, and God walked with them while they were refugees, fleeing a land of unbearable pain. We are not alone. We live in God's world, and we are called to choose to live with respect in creation, to love and to serve our neighbors, and to seek justice and resist evil. May God bless us into choosing to unite the human family instead of dividing it. And may we, like Jesus, Thich Nhat Hanh, and Rabbi Douglas Goldhammer, reach out to others in compassion and love. Amen.
please join me for our closing prayer. God of love and compassion, we have committed ourselves to journey with Jesus during this Lenten season. We have hope that you will recreate our world so that all people will live in peace and justice. Call each one of us out of the wilderness of apathy and help us to reach out to those who do not know hope or love. Hear the longings of our hearts and the cries of those who yearn to live in peace and justice. God of hope, we pray to you when hope seems scarce, as our world is in shock with the horror of war. You alone know the extent of these horrors committed, and so we pray that you will give world leaders wisdom as they look for diplomatic and economic ways to end this aggression. We pray for the people of Ukraine who are reeling from the trauma of invasion, we give you thanks for the open arms of neighboring countries who are willing to take in refugees. And we pray that our country will also step up. We also pray for the Russian citizens who are caught up in a war they want no part of. Help them to have the courage to speak their truth. And help us, O oh God, to believe that justice will prevail. And now, O oh God, we offer up to you in a moment of silence what is in our own hearts. O oh God, we offer this prayer to you in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. May you live this week in eternal love, honoring the sacrifice of our Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. And may God bless you and keep you. May God's face always shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
and may God's countenance be upon you and give you peace. Amen.